Hello, this is Greg the Rural Economist, and this is the second video in the gardening series. I'm going to try to knock out all of the uh, foundational stuff as quick as I can, that way I can get into the nuts and bolts. In this video, we're going to be talking about sunlight or solar aspect. Now, when you're choosing wherever you're going to grow your food at your home, you've got to consider lighting. You've got to consider sunlight. And depending upon where you are, the situation that you're facing, you may find that you have some areas that get full sun, like sun from morning all the way to evening. And then you may find that you have some places that get some shade during certain parts of the day. And then you may find that you have some places that have what we'd call model shade or full shade pretty much all day. So when you do that, that you can grow something in all of those different locations, but you can't grow the same things in them all. Things like tomatoes, peppers, and corn and stuff like that pretty much require full sun. Whereas um, your lettuces um, and uh, like beans and chard and like some of the squashes can handle some of the uh, more model shape. Now, there's a good rule of thumb, but there are exceptions to this rule. If you eat it for the fruit or the root, full sun. If you eat it for the leaf, shade is fine. Now, I've already said that like beans and peas and things like that can handle some model shade, so you're going, well, that's really kind of for the fruit, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. But there's another thing to consider. Anything that has really large leaves was probably in its original form like a, uh, a forest edge plant. Now, like running beans and things like that, they have fairly large leaves and they produce a whole bunch of them. I have accidentally put in, put seeds out right underneath the tree and actually had like green beans run up the side of a tree and do absolutely fine. In fact, some of them do incredible. Here in the southeast, it actually gets so hot during the summertime that there's certain things that actually need shade in order to thrive. So when you look at it, and depending upon the time of the year, of course, the shade changes because, you know, our planet tilts on its axis and that's what causes us in the winter time to have you know eight to eight and a half hours of sunlight and in the summertime to have darn near 16. you know and the further north you are or the further south you are the the closer you are to the poles the more extreme that change is the closer that you are to the equator the less you know so when you're looking at where you're going to grow your groceries, you've got to take sunlight into consideration. Now, if you only have uh, one area, then there are ways to augment sunlight. I've actually helped some friends of mine put in some reflectors that would collect sunlight and bounce it to where they were able to grow their veggies because they weren't able to get full sun and the plants were going, I need more light. So, I mean, there are things you can do, but that's something that you really, really, really need to consider. Okay? So, like I said, I'm trying to cut this up into small bite-sized portions and I'm going to try to cover the uh, fundamentals pretty quickly so our next video is going to be on water and i'm hoping to have it out by like thursday or friday okay um if you enjoy homesteading and preparedness related topics check out our podcast we cover all kinds of things on there yeah it's called the bringing rural back podcast it's available on itunes and stitcher and several other podcast directories so check us out if you enjoy it you know consider giving us a rating once again on this if you enjoyed this video give us a thumbs up leave a comment i love reading your comments i love your questions i appreciate it you help me immensely when you ask questions or you're encouraging it's pretty cool all right step by step we're bringing rural back 
Have a good day. Bye-bye.